There are two verses which we, when we reflect upon them today, and the story that is behind these two verses, which is the battle of the Khandaq, the battle of the trench, or the Confederates, in the time of the Prophet وسلم, we understand the extent towards which a person can go through tribulation. And so then when the tribulation becomes most severe, when we look at the tribulation from an outward aspect, and we see believers, it may even be happening to ourselves that when we go through the utmost <coughs> severe tribulation, then what is it that we need to focus on? And this is something that we often lose sight of. Because just as we understand that there are outward roots and causes to tribulations that occur to believers, we also know that there are inward roots and causes. And that when we focus on one to the exclusion of the other, or that we emphasize one over another, then it becomes more difficult to overcome the tribulation. And so these two verses, when we reflect upon them and recite them from the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be able to understand that yes, it is possible that you can be shaken. And you can be shaken in such a way that it becomes a very severe, clear tribulation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But what is required at that point? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us. And He says, do you think that you will enter paradise without being there come to you the light of that which came to those before you? Do you think that you're going to get into Jannah without being Christ? With the light of that which those people who came before you were trying. They were afflicted with misfortune and hardship to the point where the messenger and those who were with him, they said, when is the help of Allah coming? This is a question that we might find ourselves today asking that we know there are believers. We know that there are people who are suffering severe hardships and tribulations. And we say, when is it going to come to an end? When is the, the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala going to come to an end? But then Allah concludes this verse with that sense of hope to say that the, the help is near. The help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala indeed is near. But the idea behind this is that it's at the level of our hearts. It's at the level of our faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be able to understand that reality. That in spite of the tribulation that a person is going through and how difficult it seems, the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is there. But this is something that we have to have absolute certainty. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, Imam ibn Kathir, he says in his tafsir regarding this verse, وَزُلْزِلُوا خَوْفًا مِنَ الْأَعْدَاءِ زِلْزَالًا شَدِيدًا وَمْتُحِنُوا إِمْتِحَانًا عَظِيمًا كَمَا جَاءَ فِي الْحَدِيدَ الصَّحِيحِ He says that when Allah is referring to this shaking of the believers, that they were shaken to the utmost in terms of having fear of those who are coming against you, having fear of the enemy, this is a reality that we're witnessing. This is a reality that you witness when you see people that are being killed or oppressed or suffering. And they're doing being, and it's happening to them in the most despicable and in the most horrific and horrendous of ways. And that this shakes you to the core. And that this is indeed a great tribulation to those who are seeing it, let alone to those who are suffering it or those who are experiencing it. And so then he brings the hadith of our Prophet that Khabab ibn Arad, that he was one of the early Sahaba who became a Muslim and he witnessed lots of tribulation. He witnessed lots of difficulties and persecutions of the Muslims and he went through them himself. And so then during the battles of the trench, that there were Sahaba, they would go to the Prophet Sallallahu and they would ask. During the time of the persecution in Mecca, they would go to the Prophet Sallallahu and ask. And they would say, won't you ask Allah for his nasr, for his help, for his victory to come? Won't you ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala for his help 
and to alleviate this. Make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What was the response of the Prophet? The Prophet said he replied, Inna man kana qablakum kana ahaduhum yuba'u min shaw ala mafaqatsi fayakhlusu ila qadamayn la yafrif dhalika an dini wa yamshatu bi amshat al-hadidi ma bayna lahmihi wa azmihi la yafrifuhu dhalika an dini thumma qal sallallahu alayhi wa sallam والله لا يتمنى الله هذا الأمر حتى يسير الراكب من صنعاء إلى حضر موت لا يخاف إلا الله والذئب على غنم ولكن كل قوم مستعجلين. الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم reminded his صحابة that there was a time in which there were people who came before you and they went through the most severe of tribulation. That one would be thrown into a ditch and then he would have a saw. And the Prophet is very graphic in his description to show the extent towards which people go through in terms of the tribulation. And he said that a person would be thrown in a ditch and that he would have a saw taken from the tip of his head to his feet, splitting him in half. There is not much more graphic or much more severe from a physical tribulation that a person can go through. And this reminds us of what we witness and what we see happening to our brothers and sisters in, in certain areas of the world in terms of what's happening in, in Aleppo or in Syria. We see these things happening. And so how much greater is that tribulation for those who are experiencing it? And the Prophet said, it did not make them budge from their knee at all. They did not budge in terms of their faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in spite of the outward tribulation that they're suffering. And then the Prophet mentioned another in which they would have a metal spoon that would comb their flesh and separate their flesh from their bones. Nothing can be more severe than that type of tribulation, that type of pain, and that type of suffering, outwardly speaking. But that did not make the individual give up on his faith. It did not make him budge. It did not make the person budge in terms of their faith. And then the Prophet told him, he, swear, he said, I swear by Allah, this matter will come to pass. The Nasr will come. The victory will come. The oppression will end. And he said, this matter will come as the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala until the point where the one who is riding will be able to ride from Sana'a to Yemen. And that he has no fear except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the wolf for his sheep. Something very, 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 uh, uh, very, very basic, very simple, little. And he said, the sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but you are a people that you're in peace. And so the idea behind this is we have to understand that the, the nasr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is indeed near. And so then what we need to do is we need to preserve our faith. And to have that complete certainty in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When the Muslims were going through what they went through in the battle of the Qamr, for 30 days that they remained vigilant in terms of holding off or holding off all of the ahzab, all 10,000 of them that had come upon Medina. And the Sahaba, they knew that if they were to penetrate into Medina, that would be it. The affair would be over. It would be done. And they were concerned about this. And day in and day out for 30 days, to the point where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes their state in the Quran. And that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned how they were so shaken and that their, their eyes swerved and that their hearts reached their throats and they began to think thoughts about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But what does that mean? When they begin to think thoughts about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Well, we need to understand that there are different groups amongst the Muslims at that time. There were those whose faith was firm and strong. There were those whose faith was somewhat weaker. And then there were the hypocrites amongst the Muslims. And so then, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes their state, they're coming from all sides. When they came from above you, from below you, they completely enveloped you. And then when the eyes are swerved and the hearts reach the throat, 
and they think the thoughts of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that they indeed were shaken in a manner that is most severe. And so there are the groups of the believers that were there. That the Mufassirin, they say, They have different thoughts about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That there are those who, from the hypocrites, they thought, that's it, it's over. That's it, it's over for the Prophet and for the believers. They're gone. This is what they would think about in terms of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that the believers, they had absolute certainty that in spite of what they are witnessing in front of them, the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will come. They have absolute certainty in their faith. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will allow this deen to overcome all in terms of the justice, in terms of the peace, in terms of that state of stability and tranquility. That will come to pass without a shadow of a doubt, without an inkling or an iota of doubt in the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Abi Sa'i radiallahu wa ta'ala anhu قلنا يوم الخضر يا رسول الله هل من شيء نقول؟ He said in Abu Sa'id al-Khudr, he said on the day of Khandar, they went to the Prophet and they said, Ya Rasulullah, is there anything that we can say when we're in this state, when we see what is happening in front of us? And so then he said, فَقَدْ بَلَغَتِ الْقُلُوبُ الْحَنَاجِرِ Our hearts have reached our throats. Our hearts have reached our throats. We've gotten to this point. And so then the Prophet said, Naam, Kulu Allahumma sura'awratina wa amin he said, indeed, you can say, oh Allah, cover our weaknesses and allay our fears. Cover our weaknesses and allay our fears. And so then, at that point, and when the Sahaba had this faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when they turned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with absolute certainty, and they made dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, oh Allah, cover our weaknesses, oh Allah, remove our fears. That is when the Nasr came. That is when the winds came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and did what it did in the camp of the enemies and the mushrikeen. And that this is when the believer understood and realized that's the time of the Nasr that it came. But there was the tribulation that came before him. And we're at that point where we see the tribulation before us. But what is necessary for us at this point is that we be firm in our faith. That is the priority, that we be firm in our faith. Don't think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to allow the oppressors to get away with what they're doing. Don't think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to allow the wrongdoers to continue doing what they're doing indefinitely. <laughs> that don't suppose that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is guilty of the actions of the wrongdoers. But rather, He merely gives them a reprieve, a reprise, a period of time until the day when the eyes will stare transfixed out of fear because they know that now is the time of the account. Now is the time when they will be taken to account for what they're doing. Running with nets outstretched because they have yokes around their neck that they can't even look down. This is what the Mufassim say about these verses on the day of death. That's how severe and hard it's going to be on that day for the body moon, for the oppressors. Their glance not returning to them and their hearts vacant. So don't think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did it. And the Prophet told them. He said, it took me down with your have fear. Guard yourself against the dua of the one of the one who is being oppressed. There is no barrier between this dua of the Muslim and its being answered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in another narration of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, We in Kanakafi. And he said, even if they are somebody who rejects faith. Because this is the sunnah of Allah in the world. That if you are oppressed, regardless of your faith, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will 
answer or hear your call when you call upon him. But there is that element of faith in it for the believer that when we have absolute certainty, then this is a means by which indeed we understand the hardship will pass. And that as severe as the hardship and the tribulation is, that is how great the relief is going to be. As hard and as difficult as the hardship is, and the tribulation is, then know that the, the relief that will come afterwards is going to be just as great if not greater in terms of that ease of the hardship. But you have to have that. You have to preserve. And that's where the priority stands, is to have that firmness in your Iman, in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised, even when you make the dua, don't think that Allah does not hear your dua. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hears the dua of every single month room, and He will answer it well by them. This is where our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam goes. That the dua of the balloon goes up into the heavens, and that it opens up the heavens, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, وَعِزَّتِي لَأَنْصُرَنَّكَ وَلَوْ بَعْدَ That by my glory, I will help you. I will grant you victory. I will grant you relief. Even if it is after a period of time. أقول فلي هذا وأستغفر الله وجيدي وسأسأل المسلمين وأستغفر الله وأستغفر الله وأستغفر الله وأستغفر الله الحمد لله رب العالمين وأفضل الصلاة والسلام على سيدنا الأنبياء والمرسلين محمد وعلى آله وصحبه يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما. In سورة الأحزاب when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is describing the circumstances of the believers and after they were shaken, Allah then informed us of the state of the hypocrites. And for several verses, he states that how they focused on that which was the outward and how they thought that this was over for the Muslims and how it was over for the Prophet and for the believers. And that they would say this to one another and they would be wavering and swerving going back and forth because their focus was simply on the outward. But they had no faith in the inside. This is what made them hypocrites. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after mentioning the state of the hypocrites, what does he say? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then tells us, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ بِسْوَةٍ حَسَنٍ مِمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُ اللَّهَ وَالْيَوْمَ الْآخَرِ مِمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُ اللَّهَ وَالْيَوْمَ الْآخِرِ وَذَكَرُ وَذَكَرَ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا وَلَمَّا رَأَى الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الْأَحْزَابَ قَالُوا هَذَا مَا وَعَدَنَا اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ وَصَدَقَ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ وَمَا زَادَهُمْ إِلَّا إِيمَانًا وَتَسْ that Allah then describes, He says, in the Messenger of Allah indeed is the best of examples. And we hear this verse so often, that indeed you have in the Messenger of Allah the best, the most beautiful of examples for those who have hope in Allah and in the day of judgment, in the last day. And who remember Allah much? Who remember Allah much? Here's the hope that we have in Allah and reminding, uh, reminding ourselves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our faith. And then Allah continues and He says, when the believer they saw the Ahzab, they saw the party. What was their state? They said, this is indeed what Allah and His Messenger are for. We are seeing the victory. Even before it happens, we are seeing the victory come to pass. That they know this is what the Prophet ﷺ promised them, and Allah promised them that they would be victorious. And so even before it happened, they saw it, and they said, indeed, this is what Allah and His Messenger have promised us. And that this did not increase them with anything except their faith. And it increased them in their faith, and it increased them in their surrender and submission. In spite of the outward that, that we see, that have the inward to understand and certainty in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Have that certainty, it will come to pass. إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم وبارك اللهم 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 على محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم و
اللهم اغفر المؤمنين والمؤمنات المسلمين والمسلمات الاحياء منهم والاموات انك يا ربنا سميع قريب مجيب الدعوات ربنا ظلمنا انفسنا وان لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين اللهم انصر الاخواننا المستضعفين المظلومين في كل مكان اللهم انصر الاسلام والمسلمين اللهم اذل الشرك والمشركين اللهم عليك بعدائك وعداء الدين اللهم عليك بالظالمين اللهم اشفع روعاتنا وامن روعاتنا اللهم احفظنا من دين ايدينا ومن قلبنا وعن يميننا وعن شمائلنا ومن فوقنا ونعود بعظمتك ان تختار من تحتنا اللهم ارحمنا وسالنا ومرض المسلمين واشف مرضانا ومرض المسلمين اللهم اذهب الباس والقتل والفتن عن امه نبيك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اذهب الظلم يا ذا الجلال والاكرام يا ارحم الراحمين فان وعدك حق ونصرك حق يا ذا الجلال والاكرام انصر اخواننا المستضعفين في حلب وفي الشام وفي جميع البلدان في جميع بلدان افريقيا واسيا وفي مشارق الارض وفي مغاربها يا ذا الجلال والاكرام ربنا اتنا في الدنيا حسنه وفي الاخره بحسنه وقنا عذاب النار عباد الله ان الله يامر بالعدل والاحسان وفي ذلك يكون ربنا ان شاء الله يكون الله يذكركم ويكون عليكم بالذنب ولا يكون الله يعلم الله اكبر الله اكبر